for those who don't know who you are, you know, I guess you'd be like an Instagram mobile, former basketball player, yeah. all the stuff you've got, you've like accomplished and gone through as well. How would you introduce yourself? My name is Lewis uh, M. Moore. Uh, I own an Instagram page called Bandman Talent, which is just mm. over 200k followers. Mm. Um, I make some music. I've got a few freestyles out, black box and stuff. Mm. And so probably music. Played some basketball, as he said. Mm. Yeah. Fair enough, fair enough. And I will get into the basketball and the music in a bit, but like, first bit's obviously you've gone through quite had quite a medical history. Yeah. Um, so you said like you spent most of your childhood in hospital, so you lost like explain sort of like some of the elements that you went through as a child and how that sort of So like so there's quite a lot, but um when I was born I had two kidneys. Yeah. So I was born with two kidneys and then one disappeared. Yeah. So my left kidney. So basically it just shrunk. And then disappeared. They've got an idea. They think it was cysts by attacking the kidney. So and the kidney just, broke down just disappeared. Yeah. But yeah. Um, obviously that caused some problems. So there was. I've had a few operations to try and because um, obviously when it's shriveled up, it, it caused the like, tubes and stuff connected. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it caused quite a lot of problems. So I had to have some operations on it. Yeah. Um, and one of them failed, which is the first time that operations ever failed. It's called a pyroplasty. Okay. And so they had to take some of my intestine to bridge the gap and sort all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was the kidney. Um, yeah, that was like early stages. And then later on I had um, like abdominal pain. Yeah. So like my mom says, uh, I used to, she could tell when it was about to come. Apparently I'd pull this face. And, and then it would kick in. Yeah, kick in and I'd be in loads of pain. Or Because I was so little, I didn't know how to express it. So I'd, How old were you at this point? Um, I think it was from young, I think it was from a few years to sort of, uh, it was through primary school, so probably. Well, up to 11 and stuff. You know? Yeah, for probably 5 to 11, I think that was. Cool. But I had um, I had something called the tennis machine. Yeah. Which is basically these pads which go on your stomach, so like mm. two rectangular ones. And then I had a little box, and every time I felt the pain, I had to turn the, turn the, the uh, dial. Turn the, yeah, turn the dial on. And it's like a tingling feeling, but yeah. it's supposed to help with pain. So, but every now and then I'd knock it, so I'd hit it and it would like, um, get electrocuted. Yeah. But yeah, so that was for that. And then uh, they have no idea what caused that. Um, mm. And in general, they had no idea what caused it when it would kick off as well. Mm. Um, so yeah, that used to cause some problems in school and stuff. If I was in pain, I'd get angry and just be naughty. No, I mean, that's fair enough. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's a crucial mechanism, isn't it? So. Yeah, yeah, of course. I didn't know how to deal with it. Um, so I obviously had uh, like a lot of research done into that and then later on I had the same thing but it was in my legs um, and it was like a, a random like spasm in pain yeah because you were playing basketball at this point weren't you? you so this so yeah so all through primary school I couldn't play any sport yeah so I wasn't doing any sport I couldn't even take part in PE because uh, no, it's the health risk isn't it? yeah it's all this stuff like I, I physically couldn't and I was in and out of hospital all the time um, but so I wasn't doing any sport at this point, it's still yeah. primary school. But what would happen was my legs would get like the most horrible pain ever, and it caused me to drop to the floor. Yeah, because you can't, you can't bear the weight anymore. Yeah, so it's like they just it's, it's, it's not like cramp, like I can't, I can't remember it now, like what it felt it was like. It like a sudden shock to the system, I guess. Yeah, yeah. and uh, what would happen is I'd be walking normally, and then I'd drop to the floor and just run around like in pain. Mm. Like I was little, so I was running around screaming sort of thing for like, like up to a minute, I think it was, or like a few minutes. And then I remember my mum had to, because the doctors, it only happened sometimes. Yeah. And there was a lot of times where I went to the doctors and it didn't happen. And then we get home and then on the way home, or when I got home, it like spaz out. And so my mum- The doctors had the greatest, it's not happening right No, exactly. Yeah. They have no, they don't have anything to work with. Yeah. So they, um, they asked my mum to video it. So I remember, I think I fell, it was like on the kitchen floor or mm. something, and my mum videoed it, like rolling around on the floor, and I remember, she's probably still got the video, like, backed up on, like, something, uh, isn't it? iCloud or something, yeah, yeah. yeah. but uh, she had to show that, so that was a leg pain, and then, um, uh, when I hit pri uh, secondary schools, just before secondary school, yeah. how was that, 11, 12? Yeah, that's like 11, that's like 11, 12 onwards, yeah. Yeah, so when it got there, 
uh, by this point, the, the abdominal pains are sort of slowed down. I still had the tennis machine because I didn't yeah. know if it was going to kick off again or yeah. something. Uh, the leg pains, uh, I forgot to mention, for the when I was in year six to I think year five and six, I was yeah. in the wheelchair for the leg pains. Yeah. Because obviously, if I'm walking and I collapse, like, I could hit my head or something. Or anything, and you can't, yeah. break, you can't break. <laughs> you just damage so. yourself. Yeah. So I had, um, I was in a wheelchair for that, so I remember. Uh, I was in primary school in a wheelchair and I had the pads and I, I didn't want people to know so I used to tuck all the wires in did he, under did my t-shirt. Stuff or like yeah, like sometimes like I remember, because obviously like kids are like that, aren't they? Like, they well, the lack of understanding means they're going to take the Yeah, bit, so. but they, people obviously took the piss a bit and uh, they, but I remember at one point people ripped all the pads off and stuff. Oh man. And I remember coming out and crying like, it's, it's not nice. But uh, the wheelchair, I don't think anyone really bullied for the wheelchair I think it's more of a I think I guess it's, they understand it yeah you got a bit more knowledge on that all wheelchair yeah. happens and stuff so but I remember going to school like had to everyone sitting in chairs and I build up in the wheelchair sort of thing yeah but uh, yeah but the pain would start like in the middle of class like yeah. just in there yeah but, yeah so I was in and out for loads of stuff uh, with that the hospital and um, yeah and then when I got to secondary school Mm. The the leg pains it also it disappeared so they don't know what caused it and they also, it just stopped completely mm. so the leg pains went all of a sudden I didn't have them like uh, I remember when I was young I always used to struggle to walk around so if I go shopping with my mum or something yeah. my legs would get really really achy mm. and I wouldn't be able to walk for very long at least I had to sit down yeah. but when I, so I hadn't taken part in any PE and then when I hit secondary school. Um, the leg pains and the abdominal pains and everything had all gone mm. and I was talking to my mum my mom about it the other day she was saying how I just wanted to play basketball yeah, like, yeah, yeah. so obviously I started playing basketball and I uh, got very good at it but it was good because a few years ago I couldn't even do PE sort of thing so yeah, as soon as I was nice. just you had to switch up and actually yeah I had something out. to like properly go for yeah. so it was nice yeah what was your inspiration for basketball? basketball? like what sort of because we were speaking on the way here, and like football, yeah. you're not the greatest fan of football, which is fair. Like, yeah, yeah. But people Arsenal, like, like, what drew you to the game of Arsenal? So I, th- I think I used to watch like street ball. Like, yeah, like street ball. Uh, I used to watch like the professor. Uh, oh, I love, I love all them, these man. people, and they yeah. like, like that's. Like, I'd love to be able to do that. Like, like all the the different moves and stuff. Yeah, yeah. So I, I had like a little basketball hoop in my garden. Like, yeah. probably head height to me now. Back yeah. then, it was smaller. And I used to uh, shoot from all the different like spots. Yeah, stepping stones on yeah. the on the patio sort of thing. Yeah, and then I uh, just started playing for school, and then yeah, just played every day because basically I live opposite the school, mm. um, and the caretaker lives next to the school, and he said I'm allowed to jump over the fence, play on the outdoor hoop. Oh, that's everyone. cool, man. Yeah, yeah so cool. I, me and my mate. Uh, Oh, like me and all my friends after school, we walk back from school, I'd yeah. get changed into basketball stuff, then we go and play basketball yeah. all the night. Like, I used to sneak out at night time with mates and stuff, at like 2 a.m., like go play ball yeah. and stuff, yeah. Fair enough. Like, what? why aren't you playing now? Though? So, uh, the medical stuff, so obviously the, the leg pain and everything is all gone, but there's now I've got quite a lot of um, complicated stuff with. So there's blood pressure, heart rate, mm. um, like all this stuff. So like, it's all a bit under control, the blood pressure and heart rate now, but this is symptoms that come that, that I've also got as well. So that at, a few years ago, it's been going on for years, but my blood pressure is supposed to be sort of standard. Mm. And then when you do sport, it goes up. And then when you sleep, obviously it drops a bit, but mine would be like dropping high low like so that. it's very erratic yeah, yeah it's just crazy and I, I could be sitting there watching tv so obviously to work it out i've had loads of um 24 hour blood pressure monitors yeah. like it goes up every half hour i like um the ecg heart rate things yeah. as well um and uh there was issues with blood pressure and heart rate and stuff mm. um and that's more under control now. I was in hospital for loads, messing around with loads of medication uh, to try and get it more under control. Yeah. Um, and they thought the symptoms it comes with would disappear with it. So I get, um, the symptoms I get are hot flushes. So like 
I just get really hot and mm. like, I feel horrible even if it's cold. Um, I get like dizziness, palpitations, which so you mm. feel your heart beating yeah. all over your body. Like, and then I also get um, things like memory loss. So like, we could be like, if it hasn't happened now, but sometimes I could be talking to someone and I literally forget what we're talking about and they say something and I'd be like, me to repeat what the hell you say? Yeah, all that. Like, so now maybe like keys and stuff. Because obviously you just leave them lying around. Um, because you're because you're quite a talented basketball player. Like, yeah. So and um, I realised I was always good at the physical stuff. Um, in terms of being athletic and fast and stuff, but when it came to like understanding, um, what time the game and stuff, like the game and stuff, I was always slower. But I didn't realise at the time. I didn't know about all this other medical stuff. Well, I was feeling so ill, it was affecting memory, concentration and stuff. Which is probably why then... Yeah, so I I remember uh, when I was, like, we were playing um, for, like, the local local team. And I I was always, uh, like, I might have been, like, top scorer or something, but I'd be marking the wrong man. (laughs) Or, like, I'm the last person to get the drill sort of thing, but it's all medical stuff. But but the main reason I can't... um, play now it's because of all the symptoms basically so whenever I play like I feel like I'm going to pass out mm. I can't see so like uh, I might be fine like shooting threes and they're going in and all of a sudden I do it and it go like two metres to the left and because you started to because I go all oh, like weird yeah but obviously with heart rate and stuff it makes it hard to breathe and play and stuff so mm. it's a bit difficult in terms of the because I understand how it's how your career sort of ended so yeah. kind of like injury and stuff or like yeah. so but you managed to find strength and inspiration like your music yeah so like you wrote a song called um, Dear Mom which was like dedicated to your mom and like how she stood by you and helped you yeah um, did the black box stuff come afterwards uh, the music stuff happened because um, I had a me I had a mate uh, in early as a secondary school that I was really mm-hmm. close with and then um, he passed away in a car crash oh, wow. uh, a few a few years ago now. Um, and we wasn't that close at the time. We hadn't talked in a while, but we used to be like best mates sort yeah. of thing going around all the time. And uh, yeah, because for years I've been writing songs with my uh, James. Yeah. We used to sit with headphones on for like three hours yeah, writing yeah. stuff. And then when the time was up, show each other what we got sort of thing, just for fun. And uh, obviously, and I realised, I started writing stuff um, to like just help me deal with stuff. Yeah, of course. Like, uh, most it's a, it's a brilliant way to like release stress and... Release yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. But uh, obviously when that happened, I wrote, um, wrote a song mm. for like, uh, for him. And um, yeah, I decided to do, to do it on Black Box. Mm. So that's like the first, that was like, the, where the music started mm. um, and then it, it's, it's got over 50,000 views or something now oh, so that's nice. where it sort of kicked off um, and then from there I wanted to try and do music a bit more so I did um, uh, release loads of stuff I've got a guy near me who owns a studio like oh, a nice. studio in his garden um, but it's like professional standard mm. and I used to just Try and do a song like every single day, sort mm. of thing. Um, yeah, then I did uh, Mother's Day came, yeah. and I used to do like to, to start growing the Instagram, mm. which moves into it nicely. That I used to do like Instagram freestyles, yeah. like one minute. So, like, not a whole song, I'd write like 16 bars of it, whatever yeah. the length is, um, and do like Instagram freestyles, and then I'd send them to big pages to try and repost them, yeah. sort of thing. Um, but the I did a Mother's Day, like, special one, yeah. and I showed it to her, and she was, like, crying and stuff. So I was like, I should probably make, like, a proper song. So I yeah. found a different instrumental and wrote a whole song to, and it, talking about um, how, like, she was always, when I was in hospital, yeah. all the time, she was the one who was always there next to me, like, yeah. sleeping in the chair, like, every single time. She was there the whole time. So that's what, it was, that's what it's mainly about. I swear, yeah. I swear that you gave your mum that sort of props because like it's easy to, easy to forget I guess yeah so exactly. no, I expect that you just segue into the Instagram quite nicely um, yeah because you've got like three pages of what, about 10 50,000 followers yeah so, probably comes just over that so Instagram is quite I guess Instagram in its current form is quite young but overall is like 
eight, nine years old. So yeah. like, what sort of encouraged you to go into Instagram? Like, like the way you've gone into it, where you can, you, you, can, you can sort of make a living off it at, at, at points. So we'll start off, right? I've just made, like everyone has Instagram, mm. basically, don't they? Um, and I, I just had that for a few years. And then I just started to, when I did the black box, mm. like everyone I knew sort of knew that I rapped. So I was like, well, why not just put out some more stuff sort of mm. thing. And as I said, I started doing the Instagram yeah. freestyles. And then what I did was um, to try and grow the Instagram. I used to send the freestyles to like bigger pages yeah. to try and like, with like 20k, 30k followers mm. to try and repost it. And then I found out they were getting, they didn't really like reposting it all the time because it's not really suited to their content. Yeah. They wanted to help me and stuff and support me, but at the same time, they didn't really want to like keep well, posting well, my freestyles. Well, it affects, if it affects the image of the dog. Yeah, the like case. they want to keep that, they want to keep, like keep their thing going sort of thing. Yeah. So I was like, I'll just make my own page sort of thing. And uh, yeah, and then that sort of kicked mm. it up, obviously, mm. quite a lot. But yeah, but, um, it's get yeah, it's getting about fifteen thousand followers a week at the moment. Nice. So end of year should be four hundred k, and then this time next year maybe nearly a mil. Yeah, that's nearly. nice. That because mm. yours is yours is quite um set up. So in terms of there's a theory I guess we're discussing of like if you if you have your page that's a private, it can either help your page or yeah to be affect your page yeah how, how have you allowed it to help your page so so when i was starting off because there's like there's two there's loads of ways to grow a page but mm. there's like two main ways which really help there's one which is using the explore page yeah um, and then there's one which is being private but i used to do the explore page but that's basically um you'd you post less so mm. you'd, i'd post like once a day when i was doing it and post at an active time. So I think I posted every day one thing at 5 p.m. Yeah, because Instagram's quite, we used to be, I don't know about it now, but I know yeah. before it used to tell you what hours were the most active so you can like yeah, pinpoint yeah. target when, when to Yeah, because I was public, so you, you had like uh, your page insights and yeah, stuff, yeah. so you could see when your followers are there. Yeah. Um, and basically there's like um, engagement groups, mm. which is like loads of pages. And what you do is you send the post, you post it at like mm. exactly 5 p.m send it to the group and then they'd all comment on it and basically for a post to hit the explore page what it needs is loads of comments and stuff by big pages in a yeah. short amount of time or even like not big pages just loads of people as well mm -hmm. so i used to put up like slideshows of like mm -hmm. like it's mostly just a meme page rather mm -hmm. than like a full bank page mm -hmm. right now but i used to do a meme and then did like like in three seconds for good luck and all this stuff and like to try and get engagement up because if the post gets loads of likes and comments then it'll hit explore so and like getting hit by anyone else is sort of like yeah, yeah. and then at the end i'd say like follow banner and talent for like like i used to try loads of stuff like follow banner and talent in three seconds for good luck or some yeah. stuff like that so they go through all these memes but i remember i had like eight thousand followers yeah and i posted a video and it got over two million views just by it was some random video like some i can't remember what it was but just oh, by nice. using the explore page. Yeah, and then, so that's one way. And then the private is basically, uh, people just send posts to their friends. So mm -hmm. if I post something, they're like, find the phone, they'll send it to mates. And then for their mates to see it, they have to follow. So yeah. and that's that's how the page grows now. Fair enough. Yeah. All right, cool, man. Because like, you've got your personal page and you've got Banner and Talent. Yeah. Um, is there a third page? So there's Banner and Talent, there's Banner and Fails, yeah. which is like, um, just people doing dumb stuff, <laughs> falling off roofs and stuff. But yeah, but that's, um, I'm not, I haven't focused on it a lot, but if I promote it, it can grow a bit. But it's on 12k, but it could be, end of year, it could be nearly 100k. If you put the focus on it, yeah. yeah. But I like, I want balance and to be massive to the point where I can just make a new page, get it to 20k in a day, sort of thing. So no, that's why I'm putting yeah. like, most of the focus into that. Yeah. So what made you want to do Instagram like this then? Because like, it's sort of a business for you now. Right? Yeah, so like, obviously I did it for music and then tried to get more exposure for my music. So that's yeah. what the banner page was for, to shout out my music. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and then I realised some people messaged saying like, how much for promotion sort of thing. Yeah. And I had, when I had like 30k, yeah. and I didn't know anything. So I used to do like five pound for a post sort of thing. 
give people exposure. Yeah, I've had a couple of people hit me up about when I want to use them for like doing promo stuff, so I, I, I can see where this starts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then I was like, um, I was like looking at like all these other big banner pages and people run them who have like loads of money and stuff and made a living off of it. Mm. And I just thought, um, I'd love to do that because the, the main thing with my medical stuff is not just struggling with sport, but like work. Yeah. So like I've worked loads of places like retail. Um, I tried kitchen stuff, but that was a nightmare because I struggled with like heat as well. Like yeah. that keeps everything off. So in the kitchen, I was dead. I had, there's a gym near me where I had um, a, a shift. I was there for like three hours and that was it. I got the job and everything. And then that was, I just couldn't work anymore. But um, I basically, if I'm having a really bad day and feeling horrible, like when I feel really bad, all I need to do is lie in a dark room, like with a fan and just sleep. But I yeah. guess at that point I can't do anything. Yeah. And like knowing I've got to go to work in like half an hour. Yeah, and I'm already yeah, feeling yeah, like this. You out, yeah. And then I get there and I have to push for a shift. So I find it really difficult. Mm. And um, even the place I was at recently, like they, they make loads of, uh, really good changes so they make sure like all the places I've been to sort of cater for me so like I also struggle standing up too long because it's something to do I can't, I can't actually remember but it's to do with like uh, blood like clotting or something it's yeah. not clots but it's, it's all goes to my legs yeah, and my yeah, head yeah. goes weird or whatever so they like so doing the your blood, chair blood and stuff. Stops. yeah I've got loads there it's, it's a lot more complicated than I can say because I don't even understand <laughs> yeah but um but in terms of working i'd struggle getting through shifts mm. so i got to the point where i was just doing four hour shift max because like six hours was too much i used to do three four hour shifts um and but it wasn't much money because obviously i wasn't doing that many shifts yeah, yeah, and they weren't doing not enough hours to make up the um yeah exactly yeah. to make up the money but um so yeah so i i, I gave the instagram thing a go and started trying to reach out to people yeah. and now um, like message artists and business yeah. brands and stuff yeah. and because the page has grown so quick it means um, people are willing to pay more like obviously they now have 20k I could charge five pound for a post yeah. they charge a lot more yeah so like now people pay a lot more for a post um, but the good thing about the growth is because um, it's grown so much it means the, I'll be able to make more quicker sort of thing yeah. because people pay for exposure and the more followers the better I can help them out sort of yeah. so it's good because I can I can now basically work from anywhere like from my home yeah, yeah. or like like even on holiday yeah <laughs> it's, on holiday, it's, it's, it's just for your friends yeah, 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 yeah. So. so it's good in terms of me it's good because I've always struggled to work and I thought it'd be it'd be nice to have something where I have a bit more freedom so mm -hmm. but that, that means like it sort of inspired you to sort of figure it out because you knew yeah. you had a limited set of like options based on the medical stuff and yeah. now suddenly you're, you're in a situation where you're yeah exactly because I had because um, the idea was because I'm doing music tech at uni yeah. so like producing and stuff um, that's cool actually no, congrats on that actually. yeah it's good but um, I thought like music producing like that's quite quite good like mm. you can sit in the studio you can have like an air con and stuff yeah, yeah, yeah. like I, I just struggle in like retail and stuff like that so I thought music producing like that's different but now with Banner and Talent it means uh, when that's growing I can still do really well at the music producing course and then if I want to make money from producing beats I can just put out to 200 like by then it'll be like yeah. a million people yeah and then that way it grows it faster so yeah, yeah exactly. that's clever man that's yeah clever. Ah, right, cool, man. So, obviously, like we discussed the Instagram, discussing music to, to a degree. What's that to you? Can you talk about a million followers on the Banner and Talent page, which will probably happen by next, like, yeah. next year? The um, plan is to... Because I'm at a point now where the Banner and Talent things, um, career-wise and financially, is like, really good. And it's mm. looking better because it's only going to get better, sort yeah. of thing. So I'm at the point where I'm doing the uh, uni course, yeah. but I've got something that's actually really, really working out and like, like really good money, guaranteed money and 
a future sort of thing. I and mean, then I've got the uni course. So at the moment, what I'm trying to do is get uh, the best possible as I can in the uni course. Mm. Like, I'd still go for a first um, and try and balance up the brand and talent stuff um, and just see where it takes me. So I want to, with the brand and talent stuff, well, eventually I'd want to do, because um, I, I did a 200k giveaway. Like, yeah. it, it was just gift cards. That's what people wanted. But um, I said, I said, what should I do? Loads of people were like merch. Mm. So that gave me an idea. Merch is a good idea, actually. It's yeah, like even idea. like t-shirts, like hats, like yeah. little things, like £15 each sort of thing. Yeah. But um, eventually I do merch. I'm thinking of doing like, in a few years, do like an app. So like, it'll have like, but maybe more talent-based because yeah. it's banner and talent, obviously, but the page is it's mostly banner. Yeah. Like I repost people's freestyles and stuff and mm. music promotions and stuff. But it's mostly like funny stuff. So it probably have like a submission box, so it'd be like funny stuff for the page or yeah. like music freestyles like in the yeah. bedroom and stuff. And then like a promotion box as well. So I'll keep it have a business side to it as yeah. well, but also people can submit stuff on there and then probably upload stuff. Yeah. And then um yeah, I'm also trying to set up alongside the band of the talent thing, I'm trying to sort up a business. There's something called Amazon FBA. Okay, what, what is that? It's basically, um, so this video popped up on my thing and it was like, guy spends £10,000 on designer clothes in eight minutes. Oh, <laughs> so I was like, oh, what the hell is this? And I checked it out and I was like, who's this guy? And uh, he does forex trading, yeah. like stocks and stuff. Um, he does affiliate marketing, which is what I do as well. So if like companies or brands give you a code mm. for like, like Uber, for example, yeah. every time someone signs up, you get some money. Yeah. So that's one thing he does. And then he does Amazon FBA. And I, I looked into it and um, basically you can, you have a supplier mm. and it might, once you've set it all up, a lot of it runs by itself through Amazon. Yeah. So uh, I need to do a lot of product research on the specific product. Um, so like finding good products but finding what people miss so yeah. if they're like if it's like a phone case to like add a screen protector or something mm. to try and up everyone's products yeah. so the plan is to get that going and it runs itself so I never see the product it's all kept to the Amazon warehouse and everything yeah. but the um, uh, I've got a mate who I'm meeting up with and he's making quite good money from it weekly so I've got a good supply link mm. so so the plan is to try and get that up and running mm. and keep up the ban which will basically run itself as yeah. well. keep up the ban and sanit thing and just like growing the page and making sure I keep making good money on it and then the music producing as well so I'm trying to get this set up ASAP mm. ban as a run so it sort of runs if you get yeah. it and I'll just focus on that the music and do you not fit I mean, because it's, like, it's a brilliant idea, and I guess, do you not feel the element where if the product's bad, your face is attached to it? Yeah, so, so the, so my face isn't attached to the, the Amazon product, because yeah. it's through Amazon, so yeah. what, I try and keep it separate to the brand and talent. So you're not, you're not, I guess it's not part of the brand, I guess. Yeah, but at the same time, what I'm going to try and do, since I want to make merch, like maybe make this um, branded anyway because if you brand a product then it increases value yeah but it also uh, it's like you've got your own brand so mm. what I'll try and do is uh, build like a banner and turn a website with merch and stuff mm. but sell some of the products on Amazon to completely different people so yeah. like that'll go out to millions of people mm. and then this will go out to my followers if you get me yeah so but in terms of the Amazon thing like if it's not a good product so the research is going to, it can even be like, like pencil cases, yeah, yeah, yeah. like something simple like that. You can make a decent amount, especially if I can promote it on my yeah, yeah, yeah. page. But there's little things you can do. So like, instead of people leaving a bad review mm. on your on your Amazon thing, you can leave a contact like note so they yeah. can message you directly. Because so you want to oh, get, yeah, you want it to affect the stock. You don't want, no, you want to have a five star yeah. thing. You want to, so there's loads of tricks to get onto like the first page when people search like pencil case. Yeah. It comes up with like your yeah, yeah, yeah. if you get me and bestsellers and all this stuff. So I'm trying to get all that perfect and then it should be fine basically. 
Yeah, cool. Well, it's something you got. You got a lot coming up. And yeah, I definitely yeah. wish you the best. It's definitely gonna be great meeting you as well. Thank you very much, Shitty. Yeah, man. Wish you the best, man. Appreciate it. Sure.